Date, time, 5-2-2020, at 5.38 p.m. Substance. DMT extracted from Mimosa hostilis via Q21-Q21 slime extraction tech using NAFTA. Amount. Two hits on an e-vape device loaded with 500 mg DMT in a 0.5 milliliter vape solution, nicotine-free. Onset, 15 to 20 seconds. Duration, 2 to 3 minutes. After effects, about 15 minutes. My friend had previously smoked DMT using an e-vape device where we vaporized 40 milligrams of DMT directly off of a wire mesh. The smoke slash vapor was very harsh for him and having some issues with asthma, I decided that I would prefer to try vaping DMT in a nicotine-free vape juice solution. I dissolved 500 milligrams of DMT into a 0.5 milliliter of vape juice over low heat by holding a tablespoon over a glass stovetop with low heat. Once dissolved, I loaded the vape device with a solution using the glass eyedropper. As I sat down on the air mattress that we had set up for tripping, I was anxious. Though I'd experimented with a variety of psychedelics in the past, some of them had been difficult experiences, and this was my first time trying DMT. I braced myself for the experience and took a full inhalation of the DMT vapor. It was not harsh at all, but I had the immediate visceral reaction to get it out of my lungs in a way that I had never experienced before. With salvia extracts, the smoke is harsh and uncomfortable, but I don't feel an overwhelming instinct to purge it from my lungs. I choked trying to keep the vapor in while simultaneously trying to expel it. I managed to hold it in for about 10 seconds before taking my second hit. I had to put my hand over my mouth to stop myself from hacking the vapor out, which I eventually did anyway. About 10 seconds after the second hit, I felt myself drifting away, and by the time I laid down on the bed, I was gone. I felt my body and mind dissolving, which produced moderate anxiety. I determined to surrender to whatever was going to happen, and this willed acceptance was the last thing I was able to hold on to before being lost into the DMT world. As my body dissolved, my visual field became more active, and I saw swirling waves of color. The first color that I saw was white, and it swept over and across me like a river. The white represented my anxiety about the trip. As the anxiety increased, I got the paranoid feeling that I had done this all before and had finally broken through into the real world and that my normal reality was the trip. This was reminiscent of a previous experience with 4-ACO, DMT, synthetic shrooms, which resulted in a brief psychotic episode and later depression and PTSD. I briefly worried that I would never return to normal. My psyche had been blasted apart into a million pieces, and I was convinced that if it reassembled itself in a paranoid psychotic state, that I would be stuck that way forever. Fortunately, the anxiety didn't last, and I came to the realization that there were actually more colors present than the white band and that anxiety was only a small part of the entire experience. When I realized this, my vision expanded, and I realized that there was a wall of light and color in front of me. It was mostly white, but interlaced with pinks and blues. Weaving in and out of the wall were female, feline entities that I recognized as being a part of myself. We interacted, though I am not sure how. I began to feel as if my entire life were being laid out in front of me. It was all of my past, present, and future. I became confused as to whether I had lived an entire life before. I am single, but I began to think that I had gotten married and raised a family. 
The scene transitioned, and I moved into a space where I saw waves of stacked geometric patterns, mostly cubes, squares, and lines, of the most vibrant hues imaginable laid out against a black background. I recognized in the trip that colors of such intensity could never exist in the real world. The colors and shapes themselves were ordinary. This place didn't feel very personal or meaningful. The scene transitioned again and I was in a bright place, which was much more personal and interlaced with childhood memories, pure bliss, and a sense of having the answers to the meaning of life. I was in a paradisical green field with family, and I had the feeling that this was the place that all humans came from. We all used to live together in that place, but for some reason decided to come to this earth to accomplish something important. I don't know what that task was, but it was beautiful to see that there was a specific purpose in our being here. I was only in that heaven-like place for a moment, before I left and was staring at unbelievably bright yellow golden cubes and squares overlaying one another. This place was more beautiful and meaningful than the other spaces with geometric patterns. It was connected to the heaven-like state. I left the trip ending and opened my eyes to find that I was a human being and that there was an external world that was just becoming intelligible. I was excited to be back in the world as a human and told my sitter that I was human again. I closed my eyes again and let the trip continue for a few more minutes as I was enjoying the peaceful state and visual imagery. My sitter could tell that I was having a profoundly positive experience and when I looked up, I saw him beaming at me with such a pure expression of joy at my happiness. It's a rare thing to be able to take such joy in someone else's joy, and I recognized how genuine he was being. I asked him if I could give him a hug, and he said he would love that. We embraced and I think he teared up a bit at how beautiful the experience was. I laid back down, and we spent the next 20 minutes discussing the experience. My main takeaways from the trip were that I had glimpsed for a moment the truth behind reality. There was indeed some transcendent purpose to our lives here. At the same time, I paradoxically realized that the deepest truth and meaning was seeing the smile on a friend's face. I suppose both are true. There is a deeper meaning behind the reality that we normally inhabit, but it is expressed in each moment and is best experienced in the here and now in the context of our everyday mundane and beautiful lives. The trip was also incredibly scary and anxiety producing at times, and it's been several weeks since I had that experience and I'm still hesitant to do it again, though I feel that I have integrated most of what I learned. As I came out of the trip, I noted some sadness that I couldn't live in that heavenly state at all times. It seemed so obvious that that is what we were meant for. But at the same time, I was excited to get on with my life and to continue my human experience. Another thing I should note was the extreme time dilation. When I came out of the trip, I guessed that about 30 minutes had passed and was almost overwhelmed when my sitter told me that it had only been two minutes. This is short as far as DMT trips are concerned, and I suspect this is because I vaped it and didn't get that much DMT into my lungs. I was in a paradisical... Background. I am male. At the time of this experience, I was 23 years old, weighed 125 pounds, and in good mental and physical health. I take no prescription or OTC medications, 
but use marijuana and yerba mate on a daily basis. I have a variety of substances, but my major interest lies in the psychedelics. For tryptamines at the time of the experience, I had familiarity with everything from mushrooms, LSD, Hawaiian baby woodrose seeds, ayahuasca, yopo and sebel seeds, DMT, and 5-MeO-DMT. For phenethylamines, at the time of this experience, I had familiarity with various species of Trichoceros cacti, 2CI, 2CE, MDMA, MDA, methylone, and some DOX blotters. I had also experimented with some disassociatives, such as salvia divinorum, nitrous oxide, ketamine, and DXM. This was by no means my first experience with DMT. I had been frequently experimenting with this substance on its own or in combination with other substances and had gained a high level of comfortability, enjoyment, and awe of the experiences possible with this substance. Set and setting. My room, alone at nighttime. I had taken a small amount of MDMA earlier in the evening and was in a mood to continue exploring altered states of consciousness. I felt the desire to smoke some DMT, and so did my usual setup ritual. Dim lighting, comfortably seated against a wall with a pillow at my back, and some calm, chill music lined up to anchor my consciousness during re-entry. The Experience As I rolled the stem of the pipe back and forth, heating, scrounging the remnants of DMT stuck to the sides of the glass vessel, I said, holding the flame and spinning the pipe, I asked to connect to my higher self. Show me something different. Show me something I haven't seen before. And then, I breathed in. Once, hold, exhale. Once more feels natural. In, hold, just a little vapor coming up the tube. There was a dull humming sound, like that of an old and cranky vacuum cleaner. The kind of dull, grating mechanical noise that makes your head hurt. Every summer afternoon ruined by lawnmowers and weed whippers. Every dog terrified of the menacing, vibrating, ear-busting vacuum cleaner. This terrible, painful pressure in my skull seemed to be forcing my head downwards. I went with it, remembering how I have been directed into certain body positions before on DMT, to good effect. I was directed into a position of abasement, seeking to escape the pain. With a fanfare of trumpets, a tear opened up in the fabric of space and time. Something whispered to me that I was being brought into the presence of someone worthy of great respect, and that I was privileged. Through this hole made his entrance, a kind of gloating, gluttonous male entity. It was this thing making that terrible humming noise. For a moment, his majesty spoke to me, though I couldn't understand the words. It reminded me of Star Wars, A New Hope. All right, yes, I went through a Star Wars geek phase, when all the droids are in a big sand transport and moving around, squeaking and twittering, and glob-globbing at one another. This threw me off about as much as it would throw you off, if your computer started trying to communicate to you, based on its own personal language derived from its binary encoding. Or, maybe your computer would suddenly be speaking fluid Japanese. Surely, the language of machines. Then... I was back to being simply gloated over malevolently. The audience slash hearing was closing. That vicious pain came back. Inescapable this time. Something was all wrong about this. I said, No. I will not be your servant. I will not be your servant. I cried. Leave this space now. The pain in my head was maddening, as this invisible entity latched himself onto my skull, 
over the crown chakra and pressing in at the hollow at the base of the skull. I found my perceptions being poked and prodded, seeking to maximize the painful and fearful effect. I did not let my shifting perceptions affect my centered and collected core. I sealed off my mind, a little protected kernel at the center of all the painful, fearful sensations I was experiencing. I wrote out the duration of the trip to mind flash. You cannot break my mind. I am too powerful. I can withstand whatever you throw at me. Your mind games do not trick me. Again I cried out, I will not be your servant. The pain in my head stepped up another notch. This is sacred space. You cannot be here. This house is protected. You cannot be here. I pictured the diamond-shaped protection rune encircling the entire house. With finality and strength in my voice. Leave this space now. The grip on my skull loosened and I shrugged him off. But he remained hovering in the ether. Burning a Russian sage to clear the area. At first my movements were shaky and hasty. I took the time to be calm and collected again, and then proceeded smoothly with the smudging. The dull pain was still there, tingling. This was one relentless little fucker. If you try to stay, I warned him, you have not just me to face. I was thinking of two of my roommates particularly male and female, and powerful. You will not be tolerated in this space. We will throw you out. Leave now and never come back. Spitting venom, the treaty was made. I opened the window wide to allow his passage and watched as something I couldn't see except as maybe a slippery, oily sheen to the air. Slowly pull up its foul tentacles its trailing eyeballs, and cytoplasmic brain netting devices drag its sorry ass out of my house. That's right, bitch. Hopefully he didn't slip across the street to terrorize someone else's sleep. Shit's getting serious now, boys and girls. If I wasn't so sane, I'd think I was going mad. Be careful what you wish for. Something different. Something I haven't seen before. Instant manifestation. I talked about this experience with one of my roommates the next day. He explained to me that any entity that shows up during a DMT experience is an entity that I have called in. They can try any trick in the book, manipulating my perceptions and emotions, trying to get me to give them power over myself. But ultimately, they have no power of their own over us, except that which we give them. Any entity which I call in must conform to my will, if asked enough times and with enough strength. This is a good thing to know when entering DMT space. When interacting with entities on the energetic plane, there is no way for them to hide their intentions towards us. My intuition on this one went off. There was something ill-intentioned and malevolent about this entity. It is wise to trust your intuitions in cases like this. Beware the psychic vacuum cleaner. Not all entities in DMT space are friendly. I learned a lot from this experience. It reminded me of the importance of stating my intentions very clearly and consciously before going into the experience. A conscious statement of intent serves to focus the experience, and I can rest assured, and I can rest assured that whatever I experience will be within my intent. After this experience, I started specifically inviting only those entities who are friendly, helpful, benevolent, and of positive intention for the good of all beings.
meeting the mother god. I'm sure that whatever I try to write down will be a fairly cheap description of what a DMT breakthrough is like. And anyone who has had one will be able to agree right off the bat. They probably don't need to read what I have to say because they've been there already. There is no explaining it, not in words. There have been so many little sayings that you hear like, DMT finds you, meeting God slash your creator. If you're not sure whether or not you broke through, you haven't. The second is particularly true. I had obtained a bit of the stuff because I had really wanted to try it, but I can't say that I was in any way prepared to be confronted with what I found down there. I say down there because for me it is just easier. I would say I was mentally more prepared than a lot of people who first try. I wasn't approaching this as any kind of party drug or recreational high. I did get exactly what I came for though. I just didn't know it back then. First few tries was kind of a whack equipment and the stuff just kind of burned and I got some neat visuals and even had what I thought was a deep experience where I more or less was able to experience emotions that I wasn't familiar with completely and met a very friendly fat furry cat. Also, those first two times I tried, I did have a bit of guidance, etc. But that was a parlor game compared to the breakthrough. The difference with the breakthrough hit was that I had a generally more positive experience in the actual taking of the substance. It was very much more enjoyable and not so acrid and disgusting as the first two times since my delivery this time was a glass pipe and a nice fat flame on the piezoelectric lighter. I used about 30 milligrams each time because supposedly you can back the dosage off in this pipe. I also had to reload the pipe for a second hit of that thick milky smoke because the first time it completely took me by surprise and I spat a fair bit of it out. On the second drawing of the pipe where it was just starting to vaporize I was already breathing in and feeling very spiny and disoriented and kind of getting those odd colors that kind of permeate from everything and the wiring sirens in the ears and then it went and I was well and truly on the way. The incredible thing I can say is just how layered the experience was. I recorded myself for about 20 or 30 minutes afterwards trying to explain it to my girlfriend, but probably just came across as a bit of a loony. On the layering, what I found incredibly profound was how strong and able to handle more information you become. When people say that it's over very quickly, maybe it is because I haven't done it again since writing this. Maybe you become more familiar or more able to navigate the space. But on that first voyage, it really did feel like an eternity. Everything was just right. And I was pulled away from the mind that I was communing with just at the right time. How I would describe this thing in its entirety was layers of an onion that got bigger instead of smaller just immense space and knowledge and understanding of the science and geometry and mathematics and physical properties of an entire universe. An incredible, godlike search of knowledge and control of everything I was taken in. But that was only granted to me once I became intimate with the entity, or the guide in that place. To say control of that reality is maybe wrong. I think a better word is an understanding that everything that happened to that reality was eventually going to be okay. I had no scores to settle. Just an entirely enveloping understanding of the space you were in. And then, you hadn't even come into the relationship with the entity of that dimension yet. For those that have had warm experiences with their mothers, that feeling of complete acceptance and total trust and warmth and everything happy and confronting and non-ego about that relationship we have with our mothers is magnified indefinitely. 
I had that instant relationship. And knowing with the entity the second it peeled back another layer and showed me the reality that was behind the one you and I saw and understood and had just been shown. And by shown, it was as if I became so aware of that dimension that I was completely in tune and able to understand the way things happened down to the last detail in that new place. I try not to make it sound as though it just makes you feel powerful. It completely didn't. It totally humbled me. I was then shown the nature of the next reality, and the next, each one becoming exponentially more amazing and perfect and completely non-contrived. It was like an infinite meditation with something that permeated every possible dimension and every possible outcome or thought that could potentially exist in any universe that a being could even have the capacity to think of being possible even in the depths of their deepest spiritual experiences. That last bit was an attempt at illustrating the layering that I felt. Everything I did Every time I met God, it was a life-changing experience that went far beyond words. And then I met him more. It was the same mind, but I simply went deeper into that communion with it. For me, this is a bad movie review that completely skips the plot. I met so many layers of this thing, and each time, I felt that utter God bond. That that's why I describe a lot of it as infinite. The thing that I was last experiencing when I started coming out of it was I could only describe as a deep dark blackness with purple lines barely visible on the sides of my vision. The lines were almost like patterns of a waterfall, except very neat and mathematical and understandable. That was just kind of its overflow, those lines. It was like maybe staring into a drain as it empties and seeing the water rippling and flowing on the sides. The purple shapes I saw were of no consequence compared to the blackness that I was exchanging emotions with. I felt like I had come all the way to Bowser's Castle or the Emerald City, all the way into the depths of the Matrix. I knew that this could have just kept going now that I think of it. Given how much of that feeling that I had every layer I experienced, I'm sure it could have just gone. All the same entity, but all different dimensions that it can conceive of. Obviously, the language of the whole thing was in geometric shapes. That's sort of how I communicated with it. I had an incredibly deep understanding of what I was being shown, because each layer or dimension which show me how to speak the mathematical slash physical language of that particular reality. In terms of visuals, here's how I would put it. Every time I have tried to visualize what was happening in a way that made sense to an outside listener, I might have said, which, by the way, one strong visual I got, fat, fluffy cat in a yellow raincoat. That description of that being in particular was only one possibility in that reality. By that logic, the Loch Ness Monster does exist, simply because we have thought of it. The thought of it exists in our universe. Therefore, any kind of material object or thing that you have visualized at a certain layer of the experience was only one straight possibility that could have emerged in the imagination of somebody in that entire universe. That's how my feelings were on it. It wasn't some freak show with these far out creatures. It was being shown entirely new realities where those particular apparitions might only exist in the mind of some creature or that the physical laws of that reality would allow for that thought to arise within it. Hearing a lot more people's experiences has been cool as well. But all I see honestly is people having trouble expressing themselves just as I am. Even though the ones who do this stuff a lot and try to talk about it a lot have real dramas 
even describing the first atom in one of these realities that you completely synchronize with, let alone being able to express what it's like to be able to actually walk the yellow brick road and meet the thing behind the curtain. The whole thing was so utterly moving and humbling and empowering and just plain over the top crazy that I could talk about it for years. And I think that's what I've been looking for. Here are some of the closing things I said as I was coming down and trying to make some kind of sense of what had just happened to my consciousness. They need to have DMT journalists. It makes you aware of your own reasoning. Can you create something in your own mind that you are totally unfamiliar with? First, a little background information to provide some context for the trip. This experience was going to be the second DMT experience of my life, and I was extremely excited for it, feeling a definite charge through my body as I picked up the bowl and contemplated the hit and what it was going to do to me. Having just had my first DMT experience 24 hours earlier, I was more than aware of the incredible rush that was going to blast me immediately after the hit, and, to be honest, I was a little intimidated by it. During the first experience, I blasted through the veil immediately and was thrown out into this gigantic open space, where I was shown innumerable images and events. The emotions I was experiencing in that place were that I was home and that I had been there so many times before. These were some of, if not the strongest emotions I have ever felt in my life. I had felt like an incredible revelation was thrown in my face, and yet it was the most obvious thing ever to me. I was jubilant, and you can easily see from the first trip why I would be so excited for the second. Anyway, to the trip. 6.40 p.m. In my friend's lounging room with all the lights off and with seven to eight candles burning, three close friends are present. And my mindset all day has been gearing towards preparing for this moment. My previous trip left me with an incredible sense that I needed to trip again, almost as if I was being called back into the DMT lands to be shown more. The DMT is packed in a water pipe, with a thin layer of weed above and below it for a buffer. After taking about 15 minutes to meditate and get myself centered, I decided it is go time. Empty my lungs and lean forward to the pipe. Taking one gigantic hit is the style I have adopted for smoking DMT. And as I release to smoke and lean back into the couch, reality melted away. It appeared as though I was passing backwards through a portal, a total tunnel vision. Simultaneously, I was experiencing slash hearing the loudest, most electric shredding sound that I have ever heard slash experienced. It must have been the fabrics of time shredding, because after this moment, I was no longer in the physical realm. 641 to 646 this is the part of the trip that I have the most trouble recalling, but it was no doubt the most intense part as well. I distinctly remember the feeling of being home again. I was definitely, no question, in the same place that I had gone to on my first trip, and even further down the rabbit hole this time. I was feeling the feeling of infinity much stronger than my first trip, and it seemed like I belonged in this realm this time around. I was there for so long, it really can't be put into words. In fact, my entire trip consisted of two distinctly different experiences, one in body and one out of body, but both of which lasted what seemed like an eternity. Unfortunately for me, I do not remember much about what I saw in this place, but what I was able to bring back with me was that I remember the choice I was given when I left that place. I distinctly remember 
having the choice to stay in this amazing place for another eternity, or I could return to my body. In fact, up until this point, I hadn't even considered my body or this world. But the moment I had the thoughts that the drug would surely be wearing off soon, and I'd be returning to my body, my consciousness snapped back into our physical realm. 646 to 647. Now, this is where the trip really starts getting crazy. At this point, my consciousness is back in the room I had started with my three friends, except that it is not really a room at all. Instead, I notice we are kind of floating in this beautifully golden aqueous space, similar to the wavy PS3 background, but in this indescribable depth and definition. And I immediately understand this to be the place where reality is constructed from. I try to sense my body, but it's completely impossible, and I feel completely separated from it. I look around to try to see my body, and I can make out my legs, but they are what seems like many yards down and to the right of me, meaning the point of observation would have to be somewhere above my left shoulder in the physical world. I look to my friends, but they do not look like they normally would. I can see who they are perfectly, but instead of bodies, they are so abstract that I don't even know what words would do it justice. My friends are clearly having a loud conversation with each other, except that the words make absolutely no sense to me, and they sound like the craziest combination of hundreds of languages. They are radiating this aura of power and I feel as though I am in the presence of some kind of counsel. Except that they're not here to judge me, but rather to offer support and reassure me. There are many other sounds going on in the room, echoes sounding off in all sorts of different pitches. Everything had an incredibly alien feel to it. I distinctly remember being there and listening to their pure gibberish conversation for a very, very long time. And then, out of nowhere, it hit me. The Mega Granddaddy DMT Revelation. Literally, as if thunderstruck, I am blasted with this overwhelming emotion that we, meaning myself and my friends in the room, are projecting the reality we know as life together. And even further than that, I can remember feeling the other energy within me. And I was overwhelmed with the notion that we were really all one entity experiencing whatever we want to in the physical realm, like constructing a play for ourselves to enjoy or to learn from. 648 to 652 It was after this wave of emotion hit me that reality began to melt away again. It seemed as though the room and my friend's physical existences would not be there when I stopped paying attention to them. But then, as soon as I wanted to be back in the room, I could be, and it would rematerialize before my eyes. I continued to toy around with this newfound ability until I was abruptly sucked back fully into the physical world. It was at this point that I opened my eyes and took my first look around the actual room I had started in. And then, I realized what was coming next before it even started. You see, during my first DMT out-of-body experience, after my consciousness returned to my body, I went through a spell of about five minutes, where I was shaken violently and consistently. But all the while, I felt immensely calm and even pleasurable. As I predicted, this happened again. For about six minutes, my entire body vibrated with this incredible energy force that I have never felt besides when re-entering my body on DMT. It is almost like pure ecstasy, charging through my body as my soul reinvigorates my flesh. After the six minutes, I settle down into my body, and my skin starts to feel like it glowing with heat. My head feels supercharged. Post-Trip Rundown Immediately following the trip, one of my friends had a notebook and a pencil handy, 
and decided to start jotting down everything I was rambling on about. This turned out to be an incredible tool when I wanted to go back later and remember certain aspects of the trip, because there are certain key words or emotions in the notes that will trigger entire memories from the trip. It also helped a great deal in making this journal. Really, the main thing I want to discuss from this post-trip conversation I had with my friends is this. As I was explaining to them that I had sat and watched them carry out in an alien conversation of gibberish for what seemed like hours, they told me that I had in fact not opened my eyes to watch them at all during my trip, and that they had hardly uttered more than a few words to each other. And when they did, they whispered quietly to not disturb me. This revelation absolutely blew me out of the water. Did this mean I was really watching them all the entire time through my third eye instead of my physical eyes? <laughs> wow. Morning after. This is what I remember most from this entire revelation ordeal. I cannot remember exactly what the revelations that I learned in that place were, but I do remember asking myself during the come down, will they allow me to share the information I just received? Or should I keep it to myself? This is a very strange thought, and yet I remember it as being exactly as I worded it here. This tells me that, A, clearly I felt the information was almost so sacred that people should discover it for themselves. B, clearly I felt there were other forces that revealed this information to me, and I was questioning whether or not they would want me sharing it. I was very shaken by these revelations when I was in the moment, and not in the sense that I was concerned for my well-being or anything, but rather just completely and utterly blown away by it. I was also very shaken, and a little scared when offered the opportunity to leave this reality for eternity. No doubt this is why I'm going back here now. However, I was also laughing like a madman on the inside knowing what I had discovered. It's important to remember that, regardless of what I say now to try to rationalize slash put the trips into terms we can understand through this realm, I was literally the happiest I have ever been in my life while well, realizing whatever I realized in that trip. I also got the sense deep down inside that I wasn't fully ready to abandon our reality just yet. So, maybe that indicates that subconsciously, I knew I had more to do on this planet yet. But, really, who knows. Another thing that is interesting to note, the night after this experience, I woke up about five to six times into a sort of half-awake, half-sleeping state. While in that state, I could remember my dreams vividly. And... I was moaning while laying in the bed in something like ecstasy. Now I can only vaguely remember the dream, but I have never experienced anything like that before, and am convinced my pineal slash the DMT had something or a lot to do with it. Anyway, after an experience like this, I have only the highest of hopes in regards to what DMT can show me about myself and the nature of existence. Still longing very strongly to try ayahuasca slash changa to get a more lengthy experience. Although there is no escape once in the heat of a trip like that. I hope this report helps someone make sense of something they've experienced that is as incredible as my experience was. Happy tripping. Touched by God. Intro. Ever since I was 15 years old, I discovered drugs. I made a list of what seemed interesting. I soon discovered psychedelics, drugs that opened the mind to new perspective. I made a list of what I would want to use and what not. I added DMT to my list of do's, but was careful with it. I knew I could not just use DMT without preparation, and wisdom gained from lesser psychoactive drugs. I was only 15 years old, and the idea scared me. 
For six years, I grew used to the altered mind psychedelic drugs force on me. I started with marijuana. Then next, psilocybin mushrooms. I used them twice, then lost control once. I knew I was not ready. I still felt scared. Last year, I used LSD once. A low dose. I controlled it. So I knew it was time, and I was excited to the idea of using DMT. So, in the summer of 2013, when I was 21 years old, I visited a good friend who had made me an NNDMT himself. It wasn't pure. He said about 70% DMT and 30% chemical residue. He had been my friend for over 10 years, so he told me the risks truthfully and said, so, how about it? I got scared and thought to myself, Wait, what, you mean now? Now, he said. He told me he tried using it himself, but he has weak lungs. He couldn't hold the DMT smoke and lung enough to break through, but he knew my lungs could take a lot more. He was right. I asked him, should we go outside to a park? He looked at me with a frown and said, You sure you know what DMT will do to you? You won't be able to walk at all. I didn't really comprehend what that meant. I figured it was like being really high. So I asked him, should I light a joint during the DMT trip? Again, he frowned and said, My friend, you won't be able to do anything at all. You'll be gone, mate. Gone from Earth. In retrospect, I don't think I knew what that meant. The room I was in was a student room. A small one. Maybe 10 square meters. His room was decorated with psychedelic art and classy paintings. He played the Sacred Spirit album from his laptop and dims the lights. I got really nervous. And to be truthful, more than a little scared. He told me, Take three hits, full hits, keep it in your lungs for as long as you can. So I asked him for the pipe. He told me, No, I'll hold it. You just hit it. Now, go sit on the bed. You'll fall down. So, that's what I did. He took the pipe. Most junky pipe I have ever witnessed in my life. It was a homemade plastic crack pipe. I looked at him and said, Seriously? He filled it with over 50 milligrams of DMT, excluding the residue that was still in the pipe, and preheated it. Smoke was coming out now, and I was nerve-wracked. Hit it, he said. Onset. So, I leaned closer and took a hit for over three seconds. The smoke was in my lung for only two seconds, and it hit me like a bulldozer. It tasted and felt terrible. The worst smoke I had ever had in my life. Like plastic burning in my lungs. I started to hallucinate heavily. Eyes were opening in the curtains. The wall started to vibrate. I could hear my friend say, One more time. But I couldn't see him. His voice was heavily altered, like it was being played through a computer and being played with. The pitch was lower, and it was like he talked in slow motion. So I hit it again. This time, I was starting to get really dizzy and heavy. A faint noise was starting to arise in the room, much like sound distortion. I felt like I had trouble breathing now and started sweating. I couldn't hear the music anymore and could barely see anything. But the sound distorting was getting louder. I knew I didn't have long. One more time, he said. So I took a third hit and fell. 
I could hear him say, one more time. And with all the strength I could muster, I answered, no, enough. But it was like I spoke in slow motion. The sound distorting was embracing me, like a mother embracing her child. I felt strange. I didn't comprehend what was happening to me. What is this? Where am I? What happened? I asked the when, why, what, and how questions. I could still feel my body sweat, and it felt like my nose was bleeding, but I couldn't move. And slowly it was like I could feel the DMT move through my body, and everywhere it came, it killed me. It was cold. I couldn't feel my arms at first. Then I couldn't feel my legs. And lastly, I couldn't feel my heart and breathing. Coming up. I was alone in my mind and there was nothing but my thoughts. Thoughts, I thought. Must be what death is like. Am I dying? Wake up. Please wake up. Please wake up. I didn't. I tried waking up for what felt like an hour. No good. Did I become my friend's experiment? Did he kill me? No. Having a corpse in his bed would get him in serious trouble. Then... I must have accidentally took too much. Yes. That's it. I took too much DMT. I am the first person dying on DMT. What a waste. There was so much I wanted to do with life. Sure, I wasn't always grateful for life, but... Did I want to die? No. No. What's that? A voice? You idiot. You are dying. You took too much. What would your parents say? There is a girl in your house expecting you to come home tomorrow. And know what? You'll never see her again. You will never have anything but your thoughts. But I tried everything. I tried waking up. Let's give up? Fine. Let this be my end. My life would have been brief, but I lived my life the way I wanted to. I had a good life. The Breakthrough It felt like my conscious was being lifted from my dead body and sent at light speed through the universe. I was going and going and going for what seemed like years. And then there was this dark place. I had no physical form. I was the shattering of my ego. Thousands of pieces floating in space. My memories, my feelings, my ego. I played a piece of my memories. I relived it like it was happening at that very moment. I was a little boy walking to my mother on a sunny day. I was happy and wanted to be embraced with the love of my mother. It felt like I was starting to cry, but there was no body to cry with. I relived moments of my life. My first kiss, meeting my first friends. Being bullied, my first fight, I felt everything. I started to get control over my shattered ego floating in space. My first thought was not where am I, but when am I? I am no believer of reincarnation, but it felt like this is where souls go to wait for rebirth. And... I felt a presence. 
I felt, he felt, that I could feel his presence. It felt like a him, not a her. I wanted to meet him. And instead of moving through space, space moved around me, and I started going forward. What I encountered next was beautiful. A floating ball of light. It was huge, like a red giant in comparison to planet Earth, and it made colors and shapes with its tentacles of light. Millions of tentacles of light going everywhere. I saw colors and shapes I had never witnessed before. It was profound. Tentacles started going my way to my shattered ego, and when it touched me, I learned all the secrets of existence. Images flashed in my head. Space, men, alien, gas, colors, murder, sex, TV, propaganda, the news, pain and suffering, technology, the past, the present and the future. The formula. The math behind existence became mine. And I realized all that is, is but perspective in an infinite large universe. I am God and I am men. I am the devil and I am the saint. All that I see and all that I feel is but my perspective. If men and women will ever live together in peace, we must understand that all that we feel is but perspective. Our greatest enemy is our ignorance. We kill and hurt because we don't understand. These people we kill and hurt are not bad, they are different. They have a different perspective. Western society has taught me prejudice, has taught me so-called good and wrong, but they are just one of many perspectives in the universe. And maybe, just maybe, no one is right. Not even me. Coming down. I started to hear music and chanting. I could feel my body become whole again, and slowly I could feel the sweat on my face and the pain in my lungs. I opened my eyes and could see the eyes on the curtain stare at me. I felt very light and started to speak. Water. A man sat next to me. He was chanting and appeared to make a sign in the air, almost like he was conjuring up magic. His face was covered in a mask of light and color. It seemed familiar. He gave me water and kept chanting. His long blonde hair was swirling. It fascinated me. Just like his chanting and signs. I drank. It felt good. The memories of my breakthrough started to come to me. I lay down on the bed and smiled. I felt great. I traveled and found truth. I could already feel it changed me forever. A familiar voice. Are you okay? How was it? He calmly asked. I was back. After Effects I am one of you. A perspective in this increasingly mad and dangerous world. But I hate no longer. Hate is for the unloved and the unnatural. The MT Journal Day 1 Burn it using the foil and 2-liter method. Tasted like gasoline. 
Never doing DMT again. Day two. Tried smoking DMT out of a crack pipe. Holy moly, this stuff is amazing. I smoked for a few hours straight, basically breathing DMT instead of air while sitting on my bed. The changes to the world are absolutely mind-blowing. Gaining new perspectives on new dimensions of normal reality. Seeing things through their eyes. I can see my higher dimensional family. Day 3. I sat on my bed smoking it for pretty much 5 hours straight, from 8pm to 1am, and realized how greed is affecting my life. I burnt it a little, and now there is a black mark on my blanket from wiping off the charred bottom of the pipe. Day 4. Finished off my first gram. Starting to understand time as an extra dimension. Hard to put it into words. Saw a lot of geometry, especially pyramids. Everything from thoughts, spoken words, and actions echoes throughout eternity. From here on out, I'm using the Vapor Genie Glass Sherlock. Day 5 I met a very peaceful alien who was meditating. He was speaking to me telepathically. He told me to pay attention and be mindful. Not sure what deeper meaning he had meant at the time. Day 6 I was taken on an Egyptian ship to a higher dimensional city. It was absolutely beautiful, with lots of crimson reds and matte navy blues. I hear the most beautiful sounding voice of my life. She spoke to me about love. Day 7 The same woman who showed me the city showed me the coolest object ever. It was basically this boomerang that you could throw and it would fly out forever, but would still be in your hand. I was supposed to leave my memory at the door when I went to see it and each time I thought of the boomerang, again the trip would rush back and it seemed like she was trying to distract me so they could take my memory again. I told her if she wanted me not to bring that memory back to reality, she was going to have to kill me. I knew she wouldn't. Day 8 There was this man in a blue shirt bolting around my room. He was so fast. I think maybe this man knows the woman from before. I get the feeling that people in the higher dimensions somehow use human beings or their thoughts or energy somehow. Day 9 The most beautiful temple with so many beautiful objects. There was this meditating elephant imagery and I meditated with him. I saw this floating gold bar in my peripheral vision. For some reason, each time I would look at it, the bar would disappear. It was clear as day, however, so I am a bit confused by these phenomena. Day 10. Learned about tolerance, and how to take 3-4 to four big hits right at the start to get maximum effect. I smoked about 40 milligrams while standing up. Just as the DMT was hitting me, it seemed like my inner ear caused my body to assimilate the experience with my normal waking reality. This is definitely how DMT was meant to be smoked. I almost passed out, but it was worth it. I can see everything with crystal clarity. I can see humans, ether, and beings that move through the ether. Day 11. These etheric beings flew up to me and got very close to my face. It was almost like they were examining me. I was very friendly to them. The etheric field is very difficult to describe because it is always changing. I was trying to catch one of the symbols, but as soon as you look at it, the symbol changes. I finally caught the Star of David as one of the few hundred symbols. Day 12 
This etheric being came and showed himself in physical form. I was pulling the ether into physical form as he was pushing through from his side. He touched my hand and pulled on it. He wanted me to come with him, and he seemed very persistent. I was way too afraid to move as this whole thing was terrifying, and I am normally very relaxed when interacting with them. Doing so on a physical level was totally different. I heard these little whispers and pockets of air popping when he was breaking through to our world. Day 13 This old man and the man in the blue shirt from before performed some sort of game in front of me. It was fun to watch. I'm a little confused by the purpose of this. Day 14 the etheric being from before told me to pay attention again. He was in etheric form from this time. He said it was very important. Day 15 The woman from before transformed my room into an alien version of it. It was so amazing, and I was freaked out because it was after a crazy trip that I couldn't remember, because I went too deep. But the craziest thing about this was that I was back to baseline when she appeared and changed my room. I walked around my room feeling and looking at the objects and looked at the woman and said, This is impossible. She responded, Okay. And suddenly, all the changes to my room seemed to melt and dissipate in an instant. FML Day 16. The old man came alone this time. He had me tune the etheric field. He had me move it in all directions, and it needed to be in a very specific location. Then he told me to focus on a spot where he placed a purple ball. I focused, and the room slowly collapsed around me, and kept shrinking and shrinking until it seemed like I was being crushed by the fabric of reality around me. When it got very small, I heard all three of them. The old man, the woman, and the man in the blue shirt talking. It was very hard to hold everything together while focusing. I was released, and everything went back to normal. They wanted me to try again. days 17 through 20. They kept having me to try to hold the mental plane and physical plane together again so they could speak to me in plain English, but it was really hard to focus and exhausting mentally. I was never able to get it again because the whole process takes like five minutes and if you mess up, it resets. Also, if you don't smoke the perfect amount of DMT, it's difficult to see the ether without going too deep and tripping out. Day 21 The old man showed me another performance, probably because I was tired of doing the ether communication thing over and over again. During the performance, I noticed something happening in my peripheral vision. Since looking at that thing happening never works, I tried pointing to it. The old man and the man in the blue shirt got very happy, and I noticed pieces of ether that they were using for the performance disappeared when I pointed out the peripheral vision activity. This was the beginning of a whole new experience. Day 22 I started smoking DMT at the top of every hour because I realized the experiences were just a distraction from the things going on in my peripheral vision. I started writing down the results. The first test I failed because I missed one after getting the first three. I just assumed there were three for some reason. The next time I smoked DMT, I noticed that there was a different higher dimensional being based on the time of day. This made me consider that they might be taking shifts. Day 23. I noticed what seemed to be primates in uniforms taking shifts. The first two were a gorilla and an orangutan. I failed the test I was given, but afterward, 
It seemed like the gorilla got into an argument with the old man. I'm getting the feeling they are prison guards. There is a lot of subtle imagery pointing to this. Day 24 I started at 12 a.m. because I couldn't stop thinking about the prison. Lots of things were running through my mind. Are humans somehow higher dimensional beings in prison in a simulation of the past? What did I do to deserve being put in prison? The next test was given by a chimp, and I thought I passed, but he cheated and did two tests at once. He was trolling me. Day 25 Next time I was given a test by some sort of jester. I finally passed this test and was so excited. The room flooded with color and mental energy. It looked like paint, but it was made of mental energy and ether. The woman and the man in the blue shirt came over and took something out of their heads. I saw a street from their world, and they were clearly reaching downward when they reached into my head. Are humans somehow containers for souls? What are souls? Who did it take out of my head, and why couldn't I go to their world with them? I begged them to take me too, but the man in the blue shirt said, My work isn't done yet. They are so fast. But I saw a black car parked on the street. I'm so curious to see how fast the cars are in their fast AF world. Day 26 I'm given a test by a sheriff. I passed this test, and then the next few hours, I checked there were no effects. I kept checking with about 30 milligrams each hour for 4 hours until I was given a test by the warden of the prison. He was very intimidating, and used the same pattern 4 times in a row, but then he threw in a curveball and had two objects change at the same time in my peripheral vision. I chose one, and then told him about the other one. I ended up pointing at both. He seemed upset, unlike the rest of the times when I passed, but the ether disappeared after my answers, so I know I passed the test. Day 27 At the start of the trip, I took two tests back to back. One from a cop, and one from a sheriff from before. I passed them both because I'm starting to get the hang of it. After the two tests, it seems like there was some sort of container that was being flown from a sheriff station to what seemed like the president's house. Day 28 I passed the test at the president's house, and then was flown by helicopter again to what seemed like a family member's house. They clearly knew me, and were watching me, as though they wished they could communicate. They gave me one last test at my final destination, and after I passed, they said, Happy Birthday. I'm super confused, but today is December 5th, 2016, so I am sure this date is important. If they were wished me a happy birthday, it would mean that December 5th is June 6th in their world. So, I'm keeping track of both of these dates. Day 29 I am in the same place, but instead of a male family member who seems like he is in his mid-thirties, there is an older woman. She also seems to know me. She spent longer examining me than the man did, but I think it could be a family member. Day 30 I was right. I was speaking to a young girl, probably around the age of five, and she said hello to me through the ether. Then, the father came and showed me another distraction test. They showed me some of their worlds, and I saw very fast people. Specifically, a very fast man and a very fast woman. They seemed to be at work and running around to complete jobs. Day 31 I think whatever is containing the earth, human mind in their world, is portable, so it's no longer as large as the shipping container. It is probably portable, 
because it seems like the father moved me to his office and then back home later that evening where I spoke to the daughter again and the mother. The mother taught me how to use a mental sphere that looks like a sphere of floating water. Basically, you put your intentions into it, and it will manifest shapes and objects. I said the words, beautiful, flower, and love, and various beautiful objects and shapes manifested in the sphere. Then, I was curious as to the opposite effects, and I said hatred. The sphere ignited like a reusable heat pack after the button is pressed, but it happened almost instantly. Thoughts and intentions definitely matter, and our world follows the same laws as their world, just much slower. If you've ever seen the video on how to turn a sphere inside out, they perfectly describe the mathematical laws that govern our worlds. Day 32. More mental sphere work with the mother. Day 33. More mental sphere work with the father. Day 34. Mental sphere work with the mother and daughter. I also caused really awesome phenomena, where a line of ether responded to me flicking my finger through the sphere, which only they could do normally. The mother was very surprised. Day 34. Another ship wants to take me into the city. They told me to leave my memory at the door again, but I tried to sneak it in, and the trip instantly faded. Day 35. A new human woman is here. She is also very fast. She said she is somehow my mother, my father, and she is in love with me. Something tells me she is some sort of feminine creative force incarnation. Day 36. I took one small hit of maybe 10 milligrams. Normally nowhere near enough to have any effect on me. I knelt down on my knees and was very sad. My lungs hurt because I have been smoking too often and the heat had slowly damaged my lungs. All of a sudden, after a minute or two of contemplation, I was embraced by the woman from last time. I got scared, because she embraced me from behind while I was thinking deeply, and she backed off and left. I used mental energy to pull her back, and she came back and embraced me again. Then, I went on the trip of my life to their world. I saw a beautiful palace where servants would serve us food. The floors and walls were made of beautiful marble with many patterns and embedded in them was a lot of gold. Gold paths, marble fountains, pools and temples. The servants each came up with their own hallucinatory visions and showed me each of them. Each servant was showing me a different vision of fractals, colors moving hyperspheres, ever transforming, changing, geometry in a variety of colors, some not even Crayola could name. Afterward we went back to reality, and I felt much stronger and healthy, both mentally and physically. Day 37 I'm moving to Florida soon, so I try to say goodbye. They said they were going to follow me to Florida and would find me soon. I was pretty happy and saw the same black car from before, the one that belonged to the first woman and the man in the blue shirt. There was also a servant who got into the car as well, so they must be pretty wealthy. Day 38. I have moved to Florida from now until further notice. The first time I got here, there are two twin women and they are a little on the heavier side. They are very friendly and kind, and also very curious as to my head. Day 39. A scientist or doctor is very interested in my head. I know the beans from my old house were doing some work on it before I left, but I wasn't sure of exactly why or what was going on. 
they gave me another peripheral vision test at this time, and I wasn't sure if I should pass because these people seemed much more ominous than the beings at my old house. I didn't finish the test. Day 40 The scientist gave another test, and I didn't finish it again. There are these dark ether bugs that I didn't know were bugs in the old location, but they have been a part of every test. I pointed them out, and the beans were always very glad when I caught these dark ether bugs. Day 41 They gave me another test, and I noticed every time I answered a question correctly, they would push this cylindrical tube farther and farther into my head. Each time I got an answer wrong, I would fail the test and cause damage to the ether frame that was involved in processing of moving this cylinder into my head. Day 42 to 47 I am trying to pass as many tests as I can now because I want to get as much progress on the work they are doing to my brain. The woman who I believe is the feminine creative force finally arrived about a week after I did. I told her about the scientists doing the work and she said that they are good and even though I get a very ominous feeling about them, I decided to trust them. I keep working on passing tests. Day 48 I pass another test and the tube is finally 100% from one side of my brain to the other. It's pretty close to the temples horizontally through my head at about the same circumference to my temples. Day 49 Whoa! This time, this new doctor, an etheric being, not a human, came and had me sit down on the front of my bed, and he put this large etheric laser device and moved it close to my left eye. He had this device that looked like a sort of trackpad and had me look at this black dot. The laser was very fine, and he used it for about half a second at a time, and used it about ten times. Then he had me follow the black dot, and when I looked away he got mad and pulled me mentally back to the dot. I started following the dot on the trackpad as it moved around, up and down and left to right. He used the laser about ten more times. And I'm pretty sure he was doing this to either clean the tube or repair the damage that I caused when I got a wrong answer during the tests. Day 50 The first scientist that freaked out originally when I had first moved to Florida was telling me that the entire world is at stake. He kept reiterating the entire world. It was rather difficult to understand because it was like he was using the ether to communicate it and as the ether would tear and rip, it would make sounds to replicate his voice. Unlike when the daughter at my old house spoke with almost crystal clear English. Day 51 The woman who I believe is the creative force, I'll refer to her as Rachel from here on out, because typing all that junk is way too much. She appeared when I dropped my lighter after I took the third hit and handed it to me saying, you dropped this. I said, oh, thanks. I took the lighter from her and turned it to put it away. Then, realized what just happened. Holy shit, that just happened. She picked up my lighter in our world and handed it to me. What the actual fuck just happened? Holy shit. I was standing near my closet and I saw her bend over and pick it up. She is blonde and very pretty. I had no clue that humans from their world could interact with objects in our world. All other times that beings have interacted with this world on a physical level, it was etheric beings, not invisible humans. Also, if I didn't mention it, she was a higher dimensional human. Also, just to reiterate, not a hallucination. I can tell when I am hallucinating and when I am seeing higher dimensional reality. There is a lot of both in DMT and I can discern the difference, at least as far as the subjective reality goes. Day 52 
Rachel and I practiced some stuff inside the mental sphere. She also tugged on my necklace, and I was super freaked out again, but in a really good way. This was so amazing and interesting. I started hanging my necklace on my lamp, so whenever it's moved, I know to smoke and talk to them. I also took a test afterward and passed. I noticed movement inside the right side of my head. Day 53 A human doctor comes this time and has me do a one-question test that was very obvious and easy. She said good and continued doing quite a bit of work on my head. Day 54 I smoke a massive amount of DMT, about 100 milligrams, and there are absolutely no effects. I was so pissed off. It was about 7 a.m., and usually they are very active between the hours of 9 a.m. and 4 a.m., so I'm assuming the times from around 4 a.m. to 9 a.m. might be sleeping time in their world. Maybe it's earlier like 1 a.m. to 6 a.m. Also, they might not need as much sleep as it seems. Day 55 There is this girl with red hair here, and she said she is an assistant of sorts to Rachel. Rachel was also there, but she didn't talk. She just stood while the assistant with red hair talked to me in plain English. She told me they were preparing me for the event and to stop worrying so much. I had a lot of questions, but she walked away. I followed her a bit, but then she walked through a wall to outside and I couldn't follow. Day 56 I laid down this time and put my face into my pillow because I was stressed out. This little being that looked like it had its muscles on the outside of its body, about the size of a rabbit, pushed with mental energy to get me to stand up and focus. So I got up, and this etheric gesture gave me a test. I passed it and felt a lot of work being done around my heart, which, to be honest, freaked me TF out. It was as if I had two heartbeats for a couple of minutes. Day 57 I started smoking DMT that was stored in a black container as opposed to blue and purple from before. I have five containers in total. I fill each jar, one white, one black, one blue, one purple, and one pinkish red, with five grams each. I started smoking the DMT from the black one, and I noticed a lot of black hues, and the distortion on the things I was seeing was much scarier. Day 58 I had a steak dinner with my family for the first time in years. They were visiting Florida for Disney World, and when I got home and smoked, the worst thing ever happened. The world started filling up with darkness. Thick, pure black, I can only describe as darkness itself, started filling my world. I was thoroughly convinced that this was the event, and that I was going to die. My muscles seemed to have atrophied during an unusable state. I felt as though my heart stopped beating, and an immense fear came over me. I couldn't help but think a lot of prisoners on death row order steak as the last meal before lethal injection. Just a thought. I forced myself to get up and walk a few steps. I grabbed my phone to call 911, but set it down, because if it was the event, then it was destiny for me to die. I decided it was okay, and I got on my knees and put my forehead to the ground and embraced the darkness. I saw a figure wearing an outfit made of pure gold with a red outline and black body under the gold armor or outfit. He seemed to be some sort of judge and was a bit intimidating. After he saw me, the darkness of the world around me, which had completely swallowed me like Sora in Kingdom Hearts, started to fade back to normality. It took three days to understand everything 
that had just happened. Day 59 When I went to refill my pipe, I decided to swap the tube from the black container with the empty one from the purple container. I cleaned everything, and then made the swap. I prayed with it in my hands, and let it sit in the purple container for a few hours. When I refilled the pipe, I was given another test, and I noticed a large number of purple hues in the auras of the beings. I took this as a sign and threw away my black container. When I passed the test, they did more work on my heart, and again, it was very unpleasant. This time was actually much more annoying than the last time they worked on my heart. Hopefully, I don't have much more to do. Day 60 More tests given by the doctor slash scientist from before. The one who is an etheric being. I passed and they did more work on my heart. Really annoying. I couldn't tell if my heart was beating 100 times a minute or if I was hallucinating, or if they were doing work on it. It was all very confusing and strange. Day 61 Wild! I had a normal-ish hallucination this time. I felt like I was having a heart attack and laid down on my bed. These higher dimensional beings I have never seen before came and took my body apart piece by piece very quickly. After it was just my consciousness left, they put it all back together and put this outfit that resembled the outfit that the Sultan wears in Aladdin, except it had blue and gold weaved into it as well. I meditated on what seemed to be a beach, and then this woman who had worked on rebuilding my body ripped my neck out of my body. It broke off as if it was made of styrofoam. Then she came back and replaced it with another neck. After she ripped it out, I stuck my hand into my neck hole, and my hand went all the way under my head. Obviously, I was freaking the fork out before she got back with the replacement. After this, I faded back to baseline, and was sitting on my bed again. Day 62 The jester gave me another test, and when I passed, I saw this heavenly light. Afterward, I got a strange feeling like I was going to meet God. I was shown more ways to manipulate the ether to cause various effects, something I hadn't done since my old house. Day 63 I was given another test by the scientist. I passed three and got tired and went to sleep. I showed them the timer on my phone and told them that's when I would wake up. Day 64 Tons of beings are here. Both Rachel and her red-headed assistant, the etheric doctor, a black human nurse, and a white human doctor. They gave me a one-question, really simple test again, and did tons of different work, mostly in my head. Then I asked them some questions, and they basically said, in due time. Day 65 I've cut my DMT use down to once a day. I feel this is optimal for me to choose a good time for both our worlds, and optimal for my health. I am smoking between 30 and 50 milligrams of pure white DMT each time. I personally have more fun using yellow, but white is much more clear and easier to interact with these beings. I was given another test today by the ether dude. Passed a few, but I think I wasted too much time. In the beginning, put in away my supplies so it seemed like it faded quickly. They are much more friendly than normal. Not saying they normally aren't, but ever since I got to Florida, the beings here were nowhere near as friendly and welcoming as the ones in California. I think they are starting to come around to my humor and kindness. Day 66 
I see two white mice sitting on my bed. Was startled at first, but after I realized they couldn't be from this dimension, I started watching them. Day 67 I didn't smoke today, but I had a vision of the old man from my old house. I think he finally caught up and found me. Day 68 Didn't smoke again. Had various visions much like a DMT experience, but I am completely sober. Very interesting. I also saw this little flying insect looking creature. It was small and white. It looked like a fly wrapped in a spider's web, but it had wings and was flying sort of like a hummingbird. It started flying away from me, but I pulled it back and it touched my finger then flew off. Day 69 I created what seemed like a portal to another world. It looked like heat waves flowing in a vertical rectangle with another world on the other side. The other world looked like a grid of possibilities and I was way too scared to try to move through it. I'm not even sure if it was a portal or just a window. Day 70. Today they worked on my legs. It was strange as always, but nowhere near as bad as my heart. Afterward, I felt like I saw this monster come and start eating at my body. Things were blurry, so I'm probably wrong. Who knows? Day 71. I smoked like 100 grams today. I felt as though my ego disappeared and I was more than my physical body. I have felt this before at my old house when I smoked high doses. If I ever die due to DMT, I wouldn't mind. I am really starting to control the flow of time in my mind. If I can perceive everything going on at different times, I can control the past with knowledge of the future and vice versa. Although the latter might not be as useful. Day 72. They worked on my hands and arms this time. I felt them do a little more work on my eyes and continue. I can't think of any more body parts, so hopefully this process is over soon. Day 73. Smoked some right before class. I think I saw a ghost on my way in. Quite interesting. I waved at it and it seemed confused, but I was in a hurry, so I kept walking. Day 74 Finally made a breakthrough. The mental body mirrors the physical body. My skin was dry after taking a hot shower, and I noticed when I smoked tonight that the mental worlds look very dry. I put lotion on and smoked again and it cleared up. So far, I have figured out that the DMT crystals somehow absorb colors from their surroundings. The mental planes mirror the physical plane. There is some way to cause the physical plane to mirror the mental plane because of the room change that happened at my old house. I can change the temperature of the room by moving the mental planes down. There is some sort of dial in the mental planes for color change but I haven't been shown how to use it yet. To break a piece of ether, you need to move it in a pattern that breaks the rule stated in How to Turn a Sphere Inside Out video. To increase mental energy, move two pieces of ether through each other. There's actually a ton more, but <laughs> ain't nobody got time to list everything I've learned so far. Day 75. I was shown a beautiful temple, but I couldn't enter further tonight. My main chick said it's because I haven't had enough human contact lately. Makes me mad. Day 76. I hugged a few of my group members during a class project and tried again. Made huge breakthroughs and solved a puzzle that allowed me to access 100% of my brain. I was intentionally rapid-firing experiences, 
and lived two lifetimes of experiences, one as an animator and one as a teen who died young. These experiences took place in under five minutes. This was the most fun I've ever had by far. Not sure of the effects on my physical body or brain, so I am going to be careful when trying this. Day 77 Saw the perfection of the higher realms. They said to progress further, I must be reborn. I have no idea what this means, but I guess I'll just take a break for a while. Day 78 I can't even begin to describe their world. It's incredible. Some words that come to mind are simple, ticking, fast, precision. Day 79 Wow, I learned a lot today. So the reality is 1000% a program. It is running on some sort of internal clock counting up to a certain time. This explains the ticking and slow movement I described in the higher dimensional human realm. I'll just call it the HDH realm from now on. If something happens before its planned time, then the system autocorrects. Sometimes it has a hard time correcting certain things, and other times it does these things quickly. I think the time rates thing I described in the comments section on Reddit are some sort of self-correcting program. Also, I learned that the happy birthday thing on December 5th was exactly one month from the day I got my DMT molecule tattoo. There are tons of people looking for answers, and I believe DMT can give a deeper insight into the truth. Will we ever get a definitive answer? I have no idea. But the journey to finding out is worth the effort. Also, thank you for all the feedback I am receiving, both negative and positive. It has helped me immensely, and because of all the feedback, I decided to create a Patreon page and make this a full-time thing while I'm going to school. I will be adding art and audio clips and other stuff, so check it out. The link is on my subreddit since it's against the rules to advertise elsewhere. Thank you. Day 80 So I wasn't sure how to put this into words over the past few days. So this time, I guess I will just tell you what I saw in one part and what I think it means in the next. Here goes. 1. I saw a giant guardian angel that looked like this floating above a giant toroid. Everything I said the angel would echo to everyone else on earth. Example, I am wealthy, I am a chain smoker, I am depressed, I am happy. As I looked at any object, the object would fade from my existence as new stimuli would come in and it would flow outward into this toroid. The same thing worked for sounds, thoughts, and any other stimuli from my mind. I also saw these elves run in the machine of reality in their world. They were constantly repairing it and breaking it down in other spots. It was quite clear they were maintaining this machine on purpose, and they were quite aware of our world. It somehow produces our reality from sounds and frequencies. Every sound was fractaling out through the toroid and flowing back into itself to create new stimuli along with observing the current stimuli. I also saw that different people's toroids could flow through each other. Like, if I had back pain flowing through mine, it could somehow leave completely and enter someone else's. As long as it wasn't defined as part of the original reference frame. 2. I personally think this is how artificial intelligence was created in the future set a reference frame to make its own decisions based on its current sense of stimuli and give its output radiate through the toroid and flow back to them. That's why all religions teach you to give what you wish to get, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, etc. I also think this is how the law of attraction works. You are the average of your five closest friends. 
Hang out with better people, and you become better. Their toroids interact with yours and change the things circulating in your own flow of reality. In regards to the back pain thing, you can change your own circulation of the toroid based on what you believe. If you say, I have back pain because I have a cracked disc, then as long as you have a cracked disc, you will be circulating that because your guardian angel is repeating your beliefs infinitely until you tell it to change them. This could explain the power of prayer and lots of other things in the religion. I'm not saying you could just say, I am immortal, and have it happen, but there is clearly a higher self watching and creating based on what you choose to do or believe in your life. This could also explain how rich people always have these really great stories of when they were poor and believed in themselves through some sort of adversity. Their GA could have seen the effort they put in and rewarded them. This could also explain magic and other esoteric and new age phenomena, since it would be quite easy to influence someone else's fear of existence, especially if they weren't aware of what you were doing. Voodoo dolls, curses, etc. The thing is though, it's all the same consciousness fractaling out into different reference frames. Hurting others is literally hurting yourself, even if you can control your own sphere of existence mindfully. Then again, maybe they are just using us as some sort of Rick and Morty battery in a higher dimension. <laughs> well, also, I'm almost out of DMT. I have like one night's worth left and will probably save it, so I might not post for a while until I find a better source in Orlando, Florida. A sitter.